and and I would not want to take one of our three showpiece events outside of our shores. Like I said, I, I'm not even too sure that taking it to an area within the UK where there isn't existing um, sport support for the game is necessarily a great idea. One of the great things about Newcastle is it ties in really well with the the Newcastle Thunder and they you know attracted a big crowd okay mostly that was because they had Bradford visiting them but they attracted a big crowd and they have done for the last two years as well on the night before Magic Weekend London Scholars are able to do a similar kind of thing with the Challenge Cup weekend as well Um, so that helps reinforce the development of our semi-professional clubs in those areas and off the back of that if your semi-professional clubs are doing well your community clubs will also be doing well because that's a clear pathway into the professional game for young locals and i think you know that's another strong reason for keeping it in the northeast mm-hmm. you and, uh, you, well we'll go back to i'm going back to a point before you saying put it to two different bank holidays one one uh, debate that's been around is why have you know, if you're having them if they're going to stick to having them a week apart why not give the championship team the magic weekend off so championship fans can go and enjoy that and then give super league sides the weekend off so they can go and enjoy the summer bash and that way you've got a lot more fans being able to because Lee played Featherstone I think it was was it Featherstone? They played, Lee and Featherstone played at 6 o'clock on Saturday which Saturday, yeah. was right yeah. in the middle of both um, the FA Cup final and Wigan versus yeah. Warrington I believe which which is yeah. surprising and if you this... moved it to the first bank holiday in May and the last bank holiday in May you don't have the Challenge Cup final uh, you don't have the FA Cup final conflicting either I'm sure there's other sporting events there always is something but not one it's... so huge and it... rooted in in the, the heartlands of rugby league you know man united fans go into that there'll be man united fans who might have gone to a, to a magic weekend yeah there's, there's champions league on this saturday isn't there with liverpool which might affect summer bash a little bit i think it's the same time as lee toronto but um yeah. which might affect a few lee fans being close to liverpool P- possibly but think. obviously we don't have english teams in the champions league final every year which is um, a blessing in my eyes because <laughs> football gets way too much coverage in this country <laughs> but, but um and, and rugby league's left to, to the likes of me and you to do podcasts about it i think <laughs> but uh yeah I, I, I do think um that's important i think that's one of the reasons why liverpool doesn't necessarily appeal to me because the, the city of liverpool whilst there's rugby league all the way around the outskirts of, of Liverpool, that the, the there's not really someone to pull off its coattails within the Liverpool area. Um, I, I I wouldn't really have thought like there is in Newcastle directly, like there was in Cardiff when you had the Crusaders at the time were a new club trying to develop and build roots in in that area of of the country. So that that that's a, an argument for taking it down to the southwest if they get a new stadium, which they're hoping to do for internationals and those sorts of things in 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 the future that's an argument for taking it down there because they have plenty of entrenched amateur clubs who at the moment so even somewhere like bristol for example as well who at the moment are struggling struggling for players struggling for financial support um the bristol sonics recently went out of business we we know what happened with cost for all goals last year and um in in league one as well so I think that there's potential there to go and grab hold of something. If you're going to move it around the UK, I'd be looking there. But yeah, I, I don't. I don't think New York is ready for yet. What about the other thing that's been the big talking point in the last week or so, and has always kind of flitted around the agenda with Magic Weekend, changing it to a round of the Challenge Cup rather than a round of the league. Now, the the main argument for this is that currently. Magic Weekend unbalances the league by having an extra fixture where you're not necessarily getting the same calibre of opposition facing off against each other and in a league where there is promotion and relegation it could make a huge financial difference to the outcome of a, to a club in their season um, you know finishing 8th or finishing ninth, uh, as, as an example what do you think about doing it as a cup round? Um Probably like right. you cut out a little bit there, so <laughs> I missed half your point then. Well, my headphones stopped working for a second, but on, on that... Um... Magic for the cup is basically what I'm asking yeah. you about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Mark. My headphones, for some reason, stopped working for a second. 
you say it's a good a, a good debate, and, the, and one debate is the money. So you're asking fans to pay for Challenge Cup so season ticket or not, you still got to pay for your Challenge Cup ticket, and then a week later pay for a Magic Weekend. And like, if you're a Super League fan, your Challenge Cup's twenty quid. Uh, you, how much was your ticket to Newcastle this year? Uh, I I have no idea. Uh, did, <laughs> privilege of someone else paying did you well, if, I imagine if i'm honest I, I can't remember but it it was in the region of 30 pounds uh for the whole yeah, weekend so that's, that's, 26 that's... pounds something like that and that was because i'm a season ticket holder don't forget non-season ticket holders don't get the discount that season ticket holders do yeah so one thing about the challenge cup being in there is that, that way you don't have to pay for two separate occasions if, like i know you get a discount with the season ticket but you're still having to pay extra money if you have challenge cup inside the magic weekend then you're just paying for one fixture and, and, and one venue um, which may attract more pe- people to come uh, I, I, the idea of knockout rugby in a big venue might excite some people but and, uh, I suppose the other way you could find out is really if you do it yeah I, I, I it? agree yeah um, people have talked about it being the quarterfinals which will be a four round uh, thing so two games a day or round six as it was now um Round six might even change when the fuck, when the structure of the whole league <laughs> changes in, in some point in the next two years. But round six had eight games. Um, you had all of the top eight from last year in, in those eight games. So there was eight clubs who knew they would be there um, out of the 12 that were there at the start of the season. So you could promote it to them the same way. Because one of the biggest arguments against the cup situation is that you won't know if your team's playing, so you won't book early. Um, and then by the time it gets close, ho- hotel prices or the idea of spending money on travelling and things like that will just prevent you from going if you've not already got a ticket. So, so there, there is that argument against it too, isn't there? Even yeah. though the monetary argument works for it. One thing I don't think I've heard anyone mention is one of the Ooh. great things about the Magic Weekend is the festival atmosphere of the weekend, fans getting along and those sorts of things. Now... With it being played where it is in kind of the middle of the regular season, yes, the the two points here or there can have a significant impact on you at the end of the season. But winning or losing doesn't ruin your weekend because it doesn't ruin your season. Do you think if it was a cup game, teams, first of all, fans would be more angry if they've lost that's, that's true. <laughs> a game than, than losing a game in the magic weekend. So you might lose some of that atmosphere. Um to an extent and will fans be as bothered sitting around watching other ties when they've been knocked out of the cup already whereas you know so Wakefield fans would have been interested in the Hull FC Hull KR game not just because they hope to see a bit of Biff in a local derby match Mm. but because if Hull KR won that would put them under even more pressure than they put them el- el- self under losing to Huddersfield, for example. So, so like that whole league standing effect of why people follow sport, you, you lose that aspect. So you might lose more people from watching multiple games. That's that, they're the two sort of question marks I have over the cup idea. But in principle, it doesn't sound too stupid from the other sides of it as well. It's like you say, maybe you want to try. Yeah, that's it. The only way you can really find out, isn't it, is to, is to just try it one year and it might turn out that every fan hates it. And like you say, if, if your team's knocked out on the first day of the Saturday of the Challenge Cup and you're thinking, well, there goes a Wembley trip, then you, you, might, you might be in a bit of a huff and a bit of a mood for the next 36 yeah. hours, wouldn't you? And you, you would be. Work on, um, work on the scheduling of the Cup and you could have a longer run into maybe the quarterfinals from the sixth round. So then you could give yourself a span of time to sell tickets. Is it yeah. another way around it potentially? Um, so I, I, yeah, I, I I like so so, so that the issue with the league, skewing the league standings, I don't have as much of an issue with it in terms of the way the top of the table works because we have a playoff system anyway through that. I know we have the middle eights, which is kind of a playoff system, but when that goes, um, if if the league system changes, we won't have that. So this extra fixture really does really does make you know people want to think about does that need to be changed do you, do you agree with that aspect would you want to see it move into the regular say as it stands now 22 rounds rather than it be a 23rd round well the next one it can like for teams like witness who play St Helens um, no offence again to witness fans but if you're saying that witness credit to them they played very well against St Helens but if you're a, a fan of that you're thinking well there goes two valuable points that we could have definitely needed at the end of the year if you're uh, yeah, because Catalan 
got to be got to play Salford and Huddersfield got to play Wakefield and they're two bottom half teams playing against each other. Yeah, and, and you're playing witness top playing of the top of the table. Ben Barber's on fire. Danny Richardson's coming through the ranks. Um, so it's, it is. It can be tough on that way, but what else? How else can you schedule it? Because if you was to just decide the weekend before, all right, first place, second, third place, fourth, then does that spoil a bit of the fun, or well, is that just? If you um, just just take it out of being an extra game and tell the teams they have to give up, I think uh, Mark Wilson's talked about this a lot on Proper Sports Show, just give up one of your home fixtures each year. The, the Magic Weekend is, is supposedly a big commercial success for Super League. Yeah. Um, Super League get paid by the host city uh, or get a contribution at least, which helps cover the ground rents and those sort of things. Then when you've got 60,000 people in the stadium, uh, if you're getting a proportion of revenue from the from the food outlets and those sort of things if you can work that into the deal i'm not sure plus you know it's a big selling point to the broadcaster who are big keen on it um so it helps you there it brings in revenue so probably more revenue can be given to the club back to the clubs especially now they're trying to run the show more themselves <laughs> than than they maybe would even make on home games so giving up a home game wouldn't be an issue what i would actually do and this is kind of moving on to the final thing i thought i think we can talk about here is what other changes if any would you make to magic and i I wouldn't really change magic too much but what i would do is take take it into the standard rounds and make teams give up a home and away game protect the easter derbies in the scheduling of the season but other than that tell them what weekend the magic weekend is on and if you were home at that game you give up a game if you were away at that game you, you know that's that's fine but make the only give, problem with that though is if you're a season ticket holder and you're losing a home game and now you're going to have to pay extra for a different a yeah. different venue there's, there is going to be uh, no matter what you do in this sport there is always going to be someone happy and someone not happy isn't, <laughs> well, isn't there no there's always going to be one person happy and 99 people unhappy usually. <laughs> but, yeah. but so what I would do is actually tell the teams that there's not one magic weekend that well there is only one magic weekend but there's also an on the round on the road kind of round where we take advantage of something that the nrl do fantastically well and we do not which is double headers um you know you know you've seen them in brisbane uh they've, they've taken them to perth they've done them in various places in new zealand and obviously sydney has had had them and they get them in the, throughout the playoffs often um and we could move a, have a on the road weekend as the as a balance off where you'd schedule the fixtures in such a way that anyone who's home on magic weekend would be the away team on the on the road or double header weekend or what have you what have it be and play at different venues around the country or around the world this is where you can then bring in the around the world angle because you're only be playing two games you're not going to be um it's not quite as onerous it's not quite as expensive to get everyone out there to to where it's going to be because you could have some in you know you could say you could have a double header in dublin or a double header in somewhere else in france other than perpignan or in barcelona or something like that and then a double header somewhere in the americas where you're trying to develop the game or that that sort of idea so then both teams all teams are losing a home game so the season tickets are sold on x amount of games rather than x plus one amount of games and yeah. uh i think that's to me that seems like a sensible solution that covers all bases uh, I, i'm sure there'll be a criticism out there and, I, and i'm hoping you've got one for me <laughs> straight <laughs> off the bat <laughs> then your problem would be what fans get to have the, the joy of traveling to barcelona and what fans get to stay in the uk and stay around the north <laughs> <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be one set of fans that are going yes we're going to barcelona this year and another set of fans are going all oh, right well we're staying up north and we're playing so and so in and so I'm not going to name any places because I don't want to offend anyone but <laughs> I'm not against that idea uh, you say it works in the NRL Suncorp Stadium when it's got a double header is a beautiful view and they've um, got 40 odd thousand there watching league games effectively I think it's it, it, it looks and sounds and feels fantastic and that's that's how I would that's how I would solve it do you have any other changes or ideas that you would do differently for, for Magic Weekend uh, it's for me, it's all about, as well as the place, the competitiveness. So there is no point. I say that you can say there's no. I want to say there's no point having top place play someone at the bottom. But witness, to my, so I was surprised. But witness played quite well against Ellens. But 
in any other case in the future, I wouldn't want first place to play bottom place. So it's all about the competitiveness. And you you would keep your derbies. It's been a while since we've seen Wigan play St. Helens at a Magic Weekend. In fact, that probably would have been the perfect. Uh, nah, Warrington were on a good 